Hi, in this video, we're talking about Vesper theory. Now, what is Vesper theory? And why do we say it that way? Because the S comes before the E. To be honest with you, I don't know. Uh, some people call this VSEPR theory. Um, but Vesper theory is, in a nutshell, it's just about the shape of molecules. The idea that electrons are negative, and when they're negative, they repel from each other. And that repulsion, in a certain configuration, causes a, kind of a certain shape to form. That's pretty much it. So let's dive into what is Vesper theory. Vesper stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Again, that idea that electrons are negative, they're going to repel from each other, and that's going to cause certain shapes to come out. Um, now, it's pronounced Vesper, even though the S comes before the E. Uh, not my decision, by the way. And it's a model used to predict the shape of covalent molecules. So these are molecules that only have nonmetals in them. And then finally, in this video, we're going to talk about just the five basic shapes. There's certainly more to Vesper theory beyond what this video shows you, um, but we will get us started with these shapes, linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, and bent. And then there's one more thing to know before we get started with this, and that's this term, steric number. Steric number is kind of a fancy name for just how many electron regions are around a central atom central atom, by the way, just being the atom in the center of a molecule. Now, what's an electron region? Well, that's a bond. doesn't matter if it's a single, double, or triple bond. It's a bond. That's one electron region. And the other electron region is just a lone pair. So essentially, to figure out the steric number for any molecule, you just add however many bonds are around the central atom to however many lone pairs are around the central atom. So that's the steric number. We're going to use that to try to differentiate between these five shapes. And here they are again, linear. Let's start with linear. Um, on the left here, I've kind of drawn out a, uh, a molecule that has this shape. And I'm just going to rotate it around in three dimensions so you can kind of see that these things are 3D. Uh, this molecule, by the way, is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is CO2. Notice that there are two double bonds on either side of the carbon. So there are no lone pairs around this carbon atom. There are uh, two, only two electron regions because there's a double bond on the left and a double bond on the right. Um, and so the steric number then becomes two. Notice this is just a line. It's like a pen or a pencil or something. Uh, the bond angle here is 180 degrees, and that's where it gets its name linear. It's just a linear molecule. So CO2 is a good example of that. Um, okay, let's move on to trigonal planar. Trigonal planar has one central atom and three atoms on the outside. Uh, notice that these are kind of like at, a, I think it's like 120 degrees. Yeah, 120 degrees is the bond angle there. It's just in thirds. Steric number here is three. Uh, that means that there are three bonds around either side of this, around, around the central atom, and no lone pairs. So a uh, good example of a trigonal planar molecule would be uh, BF3, boron trifluoride. So that's one example of one. Okay, let's move along to tetrahedral. Now, here's where we have a steric number of four. Uh, tetrahedral is a pretty common shape for molecules. Probably the poster child for a tetrahedral molecule would be methane, or CH4. You kind of have a C uh, with an H on the top, bottom, left, and right. Now, on paper, this just looks like a T, but if you look three-dimensionally, it's, it's, um, you know, it's more complex than that. And so it's a good idea to kind of get in your head what these things look like in a three-dimensional fashion. Now, this is a steric number of four because there are four uh, atoms around it. But one thing you may not see as easily is that there is no lone pairs on that central atom. Okay? Now, the next two are very similar to tetrahedral. Uh, they both have a steric number of four just like tetrahedral does. But the difference with trigonal pyramidal and bent is that we're just adding lone pairs to that central atom in place of an outside atom. Let me show you what I mean. Let's move to tr uh, trigonal pyramidal. This has a steric number of four, but it has one lone pair. And where's that lone pair? Well, it's right here up on top. This area here, you can't see it, but it's as if I had a tetrahedral molecule and just made one of the outside atoms like a ghost. It bends all of these other three atoms down, and that's what makes it tetrahedral-ish. 
Uh, it's more like a pyramid, which is where the name trigonal pyramidal comes from. Um, but just know that it has that one lone pair. And the reason why lone pairs are useful, or it's good to know that a lone pair is there, is because it does affect the shape. There is no atom there, but it's as if it, it's as if there is one. Um, those negative electrons uh, push the other three atoms down, so you end up with that pyramid shape. So, same steric number as tetrahedral, just one lone pair. Tetrahedral doesn't have any lone pairs. Now, what if I had a steric number of four and two lone pairs? Well, that's where you get a bent uh, shape here, a bent structure. Um, there are two sets of lone pairs, one here, and the other is here. And so it's like we've taken just two of the outside atoms from a tetrahedral shape, and we've replaced them with just lone pairs instead. Same kind of effect. Um, probably the, the best example of a bent molecule is water. Water uh, looks like this. I'll draw out the Lewis structure for water. Um, we've got an oxygen, which has two lone pairs, and then hydrogens. And so this matters because if you, if you kind of think about it, uh, this side of the water molecule is a little bit negative. This is actually what our next video is about. So if you're uh, thinking, huh, I don't know what he's talking about, just wait till the next video. And then this side's kind of uh, partially positive. Um, and it's because of this shape. If there were no lone pairs there, we'd have just a linear structure in this situation. And so this certainly affects how water uh, behaves. Um, in fact, the shape of molecules affect how, uh, how the molecule behaves in general. And so let me summarize these five shapes. I've got linear with a steric number of two. That means two uh, outside atoms on either side of a central atom. Trigonal planar has a steric number of three. That's three atoms around the central atom. And then for tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, and bent, they all have the same steric number of four. The difference between these three is their number of lone pairs. A tetrahedral molecule has no lone pairs. A pyramidal molecule has one, and a bent molecule has two. So that's it. That's Vesper theory. This is, again, just the basic five shapes of Vesper theory. It matters because it affects the shape of the molecule. And if the shape of the molecule is different, it behaves differently out there in the world. Thank you.